Hello, good evening, welcome to Spotlight. My name is Nuang Falong. Always an honor to be here with you to run through this one hour of relevant conversations. You're watching MX24, your home for fun, fearless, and factual content. The National Democratic Congress seems to be having some internal disagreements uh, with a few of its members uh, with the recent dismissal of uh, some members and suspension of some. And then, most recently, Member of Parliament for North Tongu, Samuel Okujetua Blakwa, has tendered in his resignation to the Speaker of Parliament and the minority, uh, the NDC leader in Parliament, uh, Haruna Idrisu, indicating his decision to step down as a member of the Appointments Committee. Uh, rather interesting developments there. He has his reasons, of course. Now, Mr. Blackwell has been a member of the committee since the sixth parliament. It was inaugurated in 2013. That's some long service. Uh, the committee has also been criticized in recent times for approving some ministerial nominees that some Ghanaians had issues with, and also some uh, party members of the National Democratic Congress. For example, uh, the recent approval of Minister of Finance, Ken Oforiata, uh, saw some members of the NDC and their representatives on the Appointments Committee uh, distancing themselves from the approval. Now, one of such people was Deputy Ranking Member on the Finance Committee of Parliament, Isaac Adongo, uh, and he, matter of fact, broke ranks uh, away from the House, uh, the NDC side of the House, over the approval of Finance Minister Ken Oforiata. It is unclear if Mr. Blackwell's resignation is linked to this particular incident. Uh, we have joining us to discuss this issue further, some members of the National Democratic Congress. Honorable Ras uh, Mubarak will, will be joining us via Zoom. We also have ABF Husseini, his ranking member for the communications committee, and Stephen Atubiga, they will all be joining us, uh, perhaps to explain better uh, what we are experiencing as third parties. Spotlight will take a quick break, and when we come back, we get into the issues. I'll also be reading you the resignation letter. Stay with us. Welcome back to Spotlight. Thank you for staying with us. It's our hope that you can be interactive and join the conversation. If you have any opinions, we're on social media at MX24GH. Leave us your opinions. If you have another perspective to this subject, we would love to hear it. Now, here is the letter uh, of resignation from Honorable Samuel Okujeto Ablakwa. He's Member of Parliament for North Tongu constituency. And he presented this letter to the NDC leader of parliament, uh, Honorable Haruna Idrisu, and to Alban Sumana Kingsford Bagin, Speaker of Parliament. Uh, and I read, Mr. Speaker, resignation from the Appointments Committee. I humbly present uh, comradely felicitations. This is to formally convey my decision to discontinue my membership of the Appointments Committee after days of careful reflection and thoughtful considerations. I shall like to state that the reasons for this difficult decision are both personal and on principle. Respectfully to take note that my resignation is with immediate effect and therefore I shall not be available for the vetting of nominees for deputy ministerial positions. May I extend to you leadership of the House, the Committee of Selection, and leadership of the Great National Democratic Congress, my sincere gratitude for the opportunity to serve as a member of the Appointments Committee in the 6th, 7th, and 8th Parliaments of the Republic of Ghana. Kindly accept, right, honorable, the assurances of my highest esteem. Uh, very interesting letter there. Uh, I mean, for someone who served since 2013, 
to tender in his resignation with immediate effect raises a lot of questions. Uh, and who better to answer these questions than members of the National Democratic Congress? And so, uh, Honorable Mubarak, Honorable uh, Fuseini, Honorable Atubiga, thank you for, for giving us your time on Spotlight. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Right. Uh, Honorable, uh, we were trying to speak with Honorable Ablakwa earlier, but it's proven rather difficult to get him to comment on this. Why would someone who has served for so many years, out of the blue, uh, tender in a resignation letter with no indication whatsoever of uh, unhappiness or unease with his position? I'm sorry, is this question intended for me? Yes, this goes to you. Okay, um, so to begin with, the Honorable Ablapa, one of the astute MPs of the minority side, having served on the appointment committee for almost nine years now, you know, it's regrettable that um, the committee will be losing him um, as a result of some disagreement. You know, but I applaud him for his courage. I, you know, applaud him for, you know, being a conviction politician. And I think, um, obviously, it's in disagreement over the approval of the finance minister, which many uh, party people outside of parliament and within, you know, parliament are very unhappy about. Honorable, you know, uh, if, you if, if you're unhappy about uh, the approval, if you're unhappy about other situations, shouldn't be, it be solved internally uh, within the party? Well, um, people have ways of expressing their disquiet, mm. their disagreement. And if you were to ask Stephen, I would even say that this is a vote of no confidence in the leadership in parliament. It is a vote of no confidence because... But it is not only the Honorable Ablaka, who himself a member of the committee, but the Honorable Adungu has also come out publicly to distance himself, mm. you know, away from the decision that was taken a couple of days ago to approve the finance minister. If you look at uh, the reasons that were given for the approval, a lot of us are really, really worried because those reasons are, are not tangible enough. Those reasons you know, uh, are not well-grounded and, and well thought true. If you say that somebody is to run the economy to the ground, and for which reason he should be given an opportunity to uh, face the consequences of his actions, you're clearly missing the point. The point is, would you give your vehicle, you know, to a driver who out of sheer negligence or incompetence, you know, crashed your vehicle? Would you give him, you know, a new set of keys to another vehicle? If you had asked somebody to take care of your home, which is a family home, you know, uh, and in four years you come back, the place has been so run down, the water closets are not working, the louvers are all gone, you know, light bill, water bills have piled up, you know, there are weeds everywhere. Would you continue to say that, oh, the person should continue to live in the house and, you know, suffer the consequences of his actions. Because by the time you return again, in four years, the house would have been completely, you know, on the ground. You know? So, when, for me, the, the... When you say this is a, a vote of no confidence in the leadership in Parliament, is it the NDC leadership in Parliament? Yes, that's what I'm talking about, yes. Specifically, NDC, specifically, Honorable uh, Haruna Idrisu, who is the leader of the NDC. It's a, it's, 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 a, it's a vote of no confidence of the leader of the uh, minority in parliament, yes. That's, what, as far what, as I'm concerned. What, That's what caused uh, this vote of no confidence? What exactly has he done to contribute to the yeah, grievances? I've been, I've, been explaining, I've been explaining to you uh, circumstances that would lead to a vote of no confidence, obviously one of which is the... Um, approval of Kenneth Foyata, you know, under uh, circumstances that I consider very bizarre. Because if you say and argue on the floor of parliament that the person has supervised a ripoff, mm. and those were the words of the minority leader, if you say that he's supervised a ripoff in respect of the McKenzie deal, you know, we saw the state dole out um, $1.5 million every quarter. If you say 
the minister has breached the Bank of Ghana Act, if you say he has a, a breached the Public Financial Management Act, if you say he's, you know, breached, you know, Kenyan law, what do we expect, what do we expect and what the public expects? But could is, this, could this know, one sense, incident sense. lead to uh, such a serious it doesn't, situation? It doesn't, it, doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be many incidents. I mean, yeah. uh, if you are confident in somebody and um, by the very act of that, that, that person, that, uh, you know, that very act could erode your confidence in the person or in the, in the institution or in the leadership. You know, and I think uh, they are very courageous members in the house, men and women. You know, who should uphold their integrity, who, you know, should stay the course of ensuring that the right thing be done. Mm. The wrong and fall of the party clearly not happy by what is happening. You know, um, you, you think a black move is courageous? Uh, you say, uh, you. Without, without, without a doubt. Right. So, are you expecting similar uh, moves by other members? Well, um, obviously, if if changes are not made, as as the rank and file of the party is clamouring uh, for, then obviously there may be, you know, some rebellion going into the future. What? what? changes do you think uh, will calm the situation that the party is experiencing now with leadership? If you have a vote of no confidence in leadership, the leader has to go. It's as simple as that. Right. Uh, has, has the leader met with uh, the members who are unhappy about I'm, recent I'm happenings? Not a, I'm, not, I'm not a member of parliament. You've called me to profile an opinion on... Uh, right. right. But you are, you, given that you're a member of the NDC... Uh, and if some members of the NDC are unhappy... I wouldn't know. Right. I wouldn't know. In the event that he's removed, who is better positioned to lead the House? I don't intend to go into those areas. Right. Right. I see. Uh, <laughs> there's a collapse of confidence, there's a collapse of trust in the leadership. Right. But and, if, the leaders if, continue, and the leaders continue to stay... As 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 the NDC's leader in Parliament has become untenable, as far as I'm concerned. Mm. Uh, Honourable, is this in any way linked to recent comments that were made by uh, Sami Jenfi, the Communications and National Communications uh, Director, about uh, some issues he had with leadership? Well, Sami Jenfi wrote a, a lengthy, you know. Uh, Notes, mm -hmm. you know, that I do not wish to associate with. Okay. Because some um, some of the issues they raised bordered on on personal attack. Mm -hmm. I think we can we can criticize this constructively, mm -hmm. you know, without attacking people's personality, you know. And as I've discussed with you over the last few minutes, um, we are beginning to see a leadership paralysis. Mm -hmm within the ranks of the NPC in Parliament, you know, and if you have a wound and you don't treat what? the wound and you decide to, you know... Um, Treating the wound can, can mean reforming obviously. leadership instead of changing leadership, doesn't it? If you, don't, if you don't treat the wound, obviously it's going to fester, and if it festers, you might risk losing your leg, you know. Um, we have a situation where we have argued when I say we, I mean the NDC, including the minority parliament, have argued that the finance minister has run down the economy, is run it to the ground. And serious issues were raised during the vetting of the minister, for which the minister nominee, well now minister because he's been sworn in, you know, was supposed to um, come forward with further and better particulars. Unfortunately, that has not been done. You know, and I... If you ask me, I didn't see the rush in having him, you know, passed when Parliament could have exercised its oversight rule of, you know, getting him come back and provide further and better particulars before he was approved. Honourable, why does it seem like the, the leadership and key members seem to be on different ends uh, in agreeing on critical issues? Uh, could one side be compromised? Key, key members of the party are stakeholders. It's just like being, I know, I know you're a football fan. Um, if you support a football club, you are a stakeholder. 
-hmm. you know, so the fans, the members, you know, the base of the party, the rank and file, expect a certain conduct from, from you know, parliament. And if that were not forthcoming, obviously, they have every right to express their, 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 their unhappiness or disquiet. Mm. Mm. Uh, thank you so much, Honorable Mubarak. I'll be coming to you shortly. We have Dr. Rashid uh, Dramani, who just joined us on the phone. Dr. Rashid Draman from the African Center of Parliamentary Affairs. Hello, Doc. Hello, Doctor. Are you on the line? Yes. Can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. Thank you so much for joining us. Good evening. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Uh, doctor, we're just looking at... Uh, Honorable Okluje-Cho's resignation from the Appointments Committee, and uh, I'm sure you may have seen his letter uh, to the Speaker of Parliament and Minority Leader in Parliament. Uh, yes. Now, what, what, what do you make of this letter? The man has served since 2013, and then he suddenly puts in a letter with, with no prior indications of uh, any problem, and his, his resignation is immediate. Well, I think this is very disturbing. We are seeing what it, what it tells us is that there are a lot of cracks in the, in the ranks of the NDC. Mm. Uh, we thought that the cracks were from outside of parliament, that is uh, at the party level. But now I think it's beginning to show uh, up within the ranks of uh, mm. the NDC caucus. In Parliament, and, uh, and this is certainly going to be very, very disappointing to particularly those of us who are expecting that this Parliament is going to be different. We are going to see the United uh, from the in the in the ranks of the NDC so that they can hold the government to account. But if of crafts like this. Honorable Mubarak was saying before you joined us that uh, the lack of confidence and the vote of no confidence in leadership means that leadership should go and leadership should be changed. I can't, I can't hear you. Uh, apologies. What I'm saying is that before you joined, Honorable Mubarak, can you hear me? Dr. Draman, no. can you hear me? You have a very bad night. Yes, it, it seems the, the line is quite bad over there. Uh, we're going to try to stabilize it. Is it clearer? Dr. Draman? Yeah, the line is cracked here. I can't, I can't yes. hear you. It seems the, the line is quite bad. Uh, my producers are just going to try to get you back on the line. Uh, I can't hear you. I oh, can't. unfortunate. Uh, Dr. Draman cannot hear us. He is from the African Center of Parliamentary Affairs, uh, SEPA. Uh, now, I'm just going to go over what we are discussing. Uh, if you just tuned in, thank you so much. We are looking at the resignation of Honorable Samuel Okujeto Ablakwa from the Appointments Committee. Uh, the letter was delivered to the leadership of parliament and the leadership of the NDC caucus in parliament, uh, Honorable Haruna Idrisu and Honorable, uh, Honorable Bagling. Uh, the letter, it's, you know, clearly details his, his resignation from parliament with immediate effect. Uh, the surprise here is that there was no prior indication from him in particular uh, about his unhappiness. Uh, we know that other members like... Uh, Honorable Adongo have expressed their dissatisfaction and completely broken ranks uh, from the party uh, with the excuse specifically of the approval of uh, the Minister of Finance, Ken Ofuriata. Uh, we have Dr. Draman back. I'm just going to go to him and see if the line is stable now. Hello, Dr. Draman. Yes, the line is clear now. I can hear you. This is good. Now, I, the question I was asking before that interruption was that you know, be, before you joined us, Honorable Mubarak was telling us that uh, uh, this which, is... Which Honorable Mubarak? Is Ras. that the former MP or yes. the current MP? The, the former one, Honorable Ras Mubarak. 
Okay, okay. So he was saying uh, this indicates a, a vote of no confidence in the leadership of parliament, uh, of the NDC side in parliament, and he thinks the leadership should be changed and the present leadership must go. Do you think uh, this singular situation means there should be a change of leadership, or this is something they can reform with among themselves? Well, it looks like uh, I don't know what is really going on. Um, you know, if, if individuals are voting their conscience mm. and they are voting uh, approving ministers based on the facts that they had before them, based on the exercise of betting that took place, uh, and they really have voted their conscience, I don't think that we can hold the leadership to blame. Because at the end of the day, members of parliament must be seen more as trustees with, with independence so that they can act independently, mm. uh, particularly when it comes to issues of national interest. Now, so if people are saying, I, as a member of parliament, maybe I went and I voted for the Minister of Finance designate, mm. and because of that, that's the fault of the leadership of parliament, um, well, I beg to differ. Mm. However, if there are some other issues that we don't know about, then uh, perhaps the leadership might have some questions to answer. Mm. Uh Oh, no, uh, Dr. Draman, these happenings, uh, we know we recently had the dismissal of the former Central Regional Chairman, uh, Alote Jacobs. We also had the suspension of Steven Atubiga. Uh, and now we have this particular situation. Are these not weakening the party? Well, certainly these are not good, uh, I mean, for the party, but I think uh, we should also not see them as, uh, I mean, things that could not happen. I think when the NDFPP was in opposition, we even saw the National Chairman and the General Secretary dismissed or, I mean, suspended or whatever. And they managed to get their act their together, came together, and then uh, managed to even win an election. Mm. So within political parties, every now and then we see some of these cracks. Mm. Um, I think the test is if they can rise um, above those cracks and reorganize themselves and provide the kind of government in waiting that that uh, that Ghanaians are, are, are looking for from the NDC. So now that uh, Honorable Ablakwa has left the committee, uh, what's the prudent way forward? Should he be immediately replaced, or is there the possibility of him returning? Well, I don't know whether maybe he has had enough, because you remember <laughs> this same honorable member, if you remember the history, during the seventh parliament, right at the beginning, when they were vetting ministers, uh, he was at the center of uh, an issue that, uh, that came up um, uh, with regards to the, uh, the appointment of uh, the veteran of the then energy minister designate. Mm. If you remember very well, the extent that even the issue ended up, I think, at the Privileges Committee. Uh, now, fast forward four years later, I think we are seeing the same member, um, you know, feeling that perhaps maybe some of what he's seeing within the committee he doesn't like. So I am not too sure that bringing him back uh, will be uh, uh, the, 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 perhaps maybe the, the wise thing to do by the leadership of parliament. Mm. Um, I think they should just replace him and put somebody else within the committee. But the most important message, I think, for me is that in the interest of this country, in the interest of the self-preservation of the NDC, and then in their own interest, to uh, hopefully win the next election, they need to show a united front mm. within parliament. I mean, this, I think, is not something that uh, is negotiable. Mm. And if they, they have to have any chance of governing this country in the, the foreseeable future. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Draman. Dr. Draman is from the African Center 
of parliamentary affairs uh, with, with quite a different perspective uh, to the situation. Uh, but foremost in it being the need to manage uh, the disagreements within the party so they do not spill over into deeper, deeper issues. Uh, he also believes Honorable Samuel Kujetua Blackwa should be replaced uh, as soon as possible so proceedings can uh, continue. Now, I have Honorable, <laughs> I have Stephen Atubiga on the line. Um, he's also a member of the NDC and he was recently dismissed uh, for anti party conduct. Hello, Stephen. I see we're having uh, issues with the line there. The line is being quite unreliable. Uh, but let me quickly go over the letter from Honorable Samuel Kulujito Blackwa, a member of parliament for North Tongu constituency, which was delivered to the leadership of parliament, right? Honorable Alban Sumana Bagbing, and uh, he's a speaker of parliament, also delivered to uh, the leader of the NDC caucus, Honorable Haruna Idrisu. And in the letter, he writes, uh, resignation from the appointments committee. Uh, and he, he, and I read in his, in his words, I humbly present comradely felicitations. This is to formally convey my decision to discontinue my membership of the appointments committee after days of careful reflection and thoughtful considerations. I shall like to state that the reasons for this difficult decision are both personal and on principle. Respectfully, do take note that my resignation is with immediate effect, and therefore I shall not be available for diverting of nominees for deputy ministerial positions. May I extend to you leadership of the House, the Committee of Selection and Leadership of the NDC, my sincere gratitude for the opportunity to serve as member of the appointments committee in the 6th, 7th and 8th parliament of the Republic of Ghana, kindly accept, right, honorable, the assurances of my highest esteem, signed yours sincerely, Samuel Kujetu Ablakwa, member of parliament. Uh, we have Stephen Atubiga back on the line. Hello, Stephen. Thank you for, for joining us again. Thank you for the opportunity and good evening to your cherished listeners. Thank you uh, so much. Good evening to you. Uh, I was asking your, your colleague, Honorable uh, Ras Mubarak, uh, if this doesn't show a deeper problem within the party. Um, thank you very much. I think the NDC party, um, we are in crisis now. The party is in crisis. And then um, the happenings of the, um, in the party is being poorly managed. And I think that the leadership of the party hierarchy and the leadership of the parliamentary um, um, caucus um, this is a test, a test for mm, CDR. Yeah. I don't want to use the word competence. They are, they are, they are, they are, um, they are competent or their they they capabilities of handling crisis or doing difficult times. And I have the highest respect among of those. In the interest of in the interest of working, we see in the way forward as, as, as serving a country beyond serving the interest of your party and personal peculiar interest. Mm. So I think that Akuja um, Abulakos' right has to be respected. And then besides all being members of parliament. Mm. Uh, on... Uh, Mr. Tobiga, can you just reposition yourself because uh, the connection there is terrible. It's, it's so uh, hard for us to hear you. Now, Stephen Atubiga was just giving us uh, his position on the resignation of uh, Honorable Samukluje to Ablakwa from the Appointments Committee, as we have been discussing. If you're watching uh, and you have more insight or you have more questions or a contribution to what is being discussed, we encourage you. Uh, to join the conversation on our social media handles at MX24GH on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, YouTube, everywhere. Uh, we are looking at why uh, a member of parliament 
who has served in the 6th, 7th, and presently the 8th Parliament, uh, and has been on the Appointments Committee since 2013. That's a good number of years. Uh, will suddenly resign from his position. Uh, Honorable uh, Ras Mubarak spoke to us earlier. We also spoke to Dr. Uh, Draman, who is from the African Center for Parliamentary Affairs, and we are presently speaking to Stephen Atubiga, uh, an, an ADC member who was recently dismissed by the party. Honorable, welcome back. Yes. So like I was saying, mm -hmm. integrity, dignity, and the pride of a man standing by his own and taking decisions in the interest and your own interest, your own integrity of protecting the party's image of protecting the dignity of, of the parliamentary. That is why the young man, he disclosed of personal and, uh, you know, he took that drastic decision in the interest of uh, uh, some integrity. So I think that... But what about the interest of the party? What, what, doesn't this give the party uh, a, a negative outlook? Um, there have been a perception a lot of allegations against the minority in parliament of taking certain decisions that doesn't sit well with the grassroots an allegation of compromising going on or what have you and i think it is good that the majority the minority comes out to pet itself in the interest of the party and i could see us having uh, john Dramani in mahama winning 2024 and we uh it seems uh we're still having issues with the lines, and you, the, I mean, his voice simply trills off uh, our sincerest apologies. We're going to keep trying to get him back, uh, and we're discussing the resignation of Honorable Samuel Okuje to Ablakwa from the Appointments Committee. This is, uh, this is a letter that was delivered uh, to the leadership of Parliament. Now, there have been a few disagreements within the National Democratic Congress in the last month, uh, to say the least. Um, prior to all of that, we, we saw Sami Jemfi release a lengthy letter against the leadership of the NDC and putting forward his disagreements with certain approvals and decisions that have been taken by the NDC side of parliament. Now, we just spoke to uh, Dr. Draman of ASEPA and Although there is a dis is this, uh, dissatisfaction, my apologies, with the leadership of the NDC, you clearly should understand that uh, leadership does not take decisions in isolation, and, and voting usually you, involves more than one person. Definitely voting is not done, uh, or approvals done by just the leadership. But there has uh, been a consistent stream of issues uh, that have caused discomfort in the leadership. And uh, as we, we heard from Honorable Ras Mubarak earlier, has led to a situation of no confidence, he says, in the leadership of the minority. Uh, Stephen Atubiga is on the line. We're having issues with technology, but uh, he's back on the line. Hello? Yes, I think the minority MPs will have to shake themselves. Mm. Will have to shake themselves will have to pack themselves, will have to um, um, remember that based on the allegations against them, we are likely, this is going to affect their re-election at the grassroots level. That is why you've seen most of the, most of the minority individuals pegging themselves, disassociating themselves from the, their colleagues of what is actually happening in, in the House. Isn't, so yes. isn't this why, the, the issue of losing votes, isn't that why... Uh, members need to tread calmly uh, in order not to upset their, their base. That is true, and that is why some of us are calling on to the, the leadership of the party, the, 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 um, um, the council elders, mm. the parliamentary caucus themselves, and then the, the, the leadership, especially luckily we have the speaker there, that certain things should be managed indoors, uh, coming out is going to affect some of the members of parliament, especially the newcomers. The fight, the first time I see them behave well, or this is going to affect. We, we are likely to see minority in parliament under John Dramani Mohammed's uh, leadership in 2024. Okay, you, you keep alluding to uh, John Dramani Mohammed's leadership in 2024. Is this something he has confirmed? 
Um, as a matter of fact, he is um, he's the only, even though I have an interest of contesting, I have an interest, the appetite of leading the party, but and, and this country is the interest of the party at the moment. The seat that is President John Dramani Mahama sits is far taller than all of us. Uh, he's been a president before, and I think he's more marketable than fighting, trying to muscle power from the MPP. We, based on what you've seen in 2020, we will need to uh, consensually come together and then give him um, um, the north to lead us. Then we let me get, let me get this clearly. You're saying that you you have a personal interest in leading the NDC. Yes, I've always had a personal interest. That has been my dream. As a matter of fact, and yet you think, John, and yet you think John Romani Mahama is most qualified to lead the party. You see, when it form. comes to a political party, your personal interests don't matter. The interests of the party must be supposed, especially in opposition. He's been tested. He's been he's been tried. And if I get the not to lead the NDC today, I'm going to use his his track record in terms of development in order to win the vote. And the man has one turn to go. And also, I look at him. I look at, up to him as a big brother, and besides that, if, if, if you compare him to the... To the, uh, to the uh, why, why don't you think you, you have the confidence and the track record to come against him? That is very true. I mean, there's no willing for presidency. If you put it out there, yourself out there, and the mm -hmm. people having confidence in and giving you the north. And mm -hmm. like I told you, and it's what you can do for your party, not the party can do for you. The party is the horse that we all ride on. But he has been able to position himself strategically very well, given the opportunity to lead before he has a chance to so, finish. So you're saying he's the better he thinks, candidate in comparison to you, yourself? Yes, at this moment, at this moment, where we find ourselves, yes. I would I, I share away that, that yes, he, he's like a, a thing god right now. And uh, the grassroots, look, in the candidate that the, 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 the delegates vote for that, uh, it's Sandramani, Muhammad. But, but he, has has not, he has not even confirmed his... Uh, his need is to, to lead the party to to oh, we, have, we 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 are we we some of we as parents I don't want to mention names are voluntarily bringing him on board whether he wants it or not even if we are ready to pay his filing fee bring him on board but but has the former president to, indicated any interest in leading the NDC to 2024? Um, even to, uh, 2020 election, believe me or not. I was, even though I contested him, but before I got his blessing, I was one of the first people that went to his house, had a meeting with him that I think he had some finished business. He needed to come in. He wasn't interested. Yes, I was contesting, but I was one of the people that told him to come and join the race and let's see what happens. If we win, so he'll So are you giving an blessing. assurance or indication that uh, John Romani Mahama will return uh, to contest the flag bearership position. He on in, record for that the NDC. Dramani and Mahama will come back and he'll be coming back on the he, he, uh, the party will approach him, the leadership will approach him, the grassroots will approach him, and he wouldn't have no choice than to listen. Interesting. Talking about leadership, uh, your colleague, Honorable Ras Mubarak, was telling us that uh, there's no confidence in the present leadership of the NDC side of parliament and he thinks they should go. Is this a sentiment that you share? Um, I think that, yes, I mean, um, power is rotational. It's not marriage that you say to, to, uh, to do us a part. And then we need the party hierarchy. We need a different, unless the session will tell us mm. or assure a different direction of where they're taking the leadership of the party and why they compromise here and there. And then, the, the, excuse my language, that the, the buck stops with the party. The party itself that gives way to government. Mm. So the, the members of parliament minority um, depends on uh, uh, so I think that yes, we should dialogue, and that we want new faces at the national level, and then that, so you want new faces. Doesn't this follow. seem like there's an agenda against the leadership uh, of the NDC as we have it right now? Uh, the professional revolution that we are calling for, or people are calling for, the draft is calling for, because the direction that they've taken us to lose 2020. It's not something that we're willing to gamble on it on 2024. So this is the call of the masses that look, give us a new driver. You give mm. us a short driver. Right now we need a, 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 a you know, an, a, a path. But, but don't we you need, think pushing need... too hard will uh, defeat the purpose of unity within the party and rather weaken uh, the party? Well, the party's interest is paramount. The party is bigger than every individual 
And I think that the voice of the people has to be respected and heard and the right thing done in the interest of the party, not in the interest of any individual. Oh, Honorable uh, leader of the NDC in parliament, Honorable Harun Idrisu, has led yes. the party, uh, I mean, in the, in the words of many people, quite well so far. Uh, why would this one incident be grounds for people to be against him and want him out of that position? Um, my brother, Harun, this is a presidential material, and then he has risen to certain rank and file of the party. And if I were him, I would excuse myself because I wouldn't let this, I wouldn't be happy with all these allegations coming through his smear, the integrity, and then the respect and the hard work that I've earned. Remember, it takes rumors to let uh, uh, lies be factual. So I think that if I were any of them, I would have... But don't you think he should, I mean, for the same integrity that you're, you're saying, shouldn't he uh, rather push back and prove himself? Well, push him back and, and, and then, yes, it, it has a repercussion of saying, but the norm has always been any new, after any election, they bring in new leadership. You've seen that the, the, the majority brought, have brought in new leadership to, to, you know. So I think we being even minority can emulate the same. It doesn't mean that um, uh, they are not good, they don't know what they are doing. It's just that in football you play, 30 minutes somebody else has to sit at the bench and they also go in and play. And I think that the party wants to see, uh, the party that uh, the grassroots wants to see a different, different set of players on, on the field. Mr. Tupiga, are you not uh, against the party simply because you had uh, personal issues with them recently? I mean, the leadership? Yes, and that is why some of us spoke up. Some of us have seen that the direction that some leadership of the party are taking us away well find ourselves. We need new faith. And then, you know, criticizing the offices of their actions and the actions that have brought us into a position. So you're saying this is linked to your own issues against uh, the party's leadership? I have been, I, this is that I have been vindicated because the leadership of the party will have to stand up and don't let certain things go wrong. You know, somebody should have been able to contain Honorable Ablapa or find out what is happening because we know others are trying to follow. You know, we know, uh, I don't want to mention them, others are trying to take similar actions whereby the, the, the Council of Elders has to write to the Parliament House to see how... When you say others are, are thinking of taking similar actions, what similar actions? Resigning? Yes, yes. Other minority members are... Are thinking of resigning from the Appointments Committee? Yes, yes, yes. Others are following similar... I don't want to muddy the water. Who, who are these their people and, and what, what are their reasons? I think in the interest of the party, I don't want to mention their names now, because, but I, I can speak with authority that... I spoke to but I don't want to make how, how many name, how many people are we looking at over here? I know of at least two that confirmed resigning and that is and, so and you know two and more members who have confirmed that they will resign. I don't want to mention their names in the interest of the party. And uh, since the Council of Elders formed the Parliament House today to have a dialogue or in the to look, so it wouldn't be nice to I don't think Ablaqa was in alone, but it's just that he hurriedly or he, he took the first lead. It wasn't him alone that wanted to go. Uh, if these people resign, aren't you uh, undercutting the presence of the NDC uh, on the appointments committee? This is a general yes. blow to, to the, the whole NDC. Well, and that is what we have to deal with. And don't forget that others want to um, go in and do things. And, and the, since the month, the Council of Elders have, have gone into. Uh, mediate or try to bring sanity into that action. I think that let's let's give them a free hand to see how how they are able to curtail what is the, the unhappiness of of some of the system members of parliament. The unhappiness is is it? Uh, I mean, we saw in some of Kujeto's letter, he said some of them were personal. But are these personal reasons enough uh, to to compromise the party? Well. Um, we think that we need new leadership. You know, there's always a reconciliation and rebuilding the party. But is this a, a, a general so agreement? You say you think that uh, you need new leadership. Is this what the majority want? We want new leadership, both at the party hierarchy and then at the, uh, uh, at the parliamentary 
Is so it a few can, people who want can. new leadership or the majority? But from the, grass, the grassroots, mm. majority, grassroots and the, the rank and file of, 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 majority of the rank and file of the party think that let's change, let's change the, the players and see what will happen. When you say you need new leadership and you say the grassroots are calling for it and some uh, key members are calling for it, who do you think is fit to step into uh, the new role? Yeah. It would be nice if I start throwing no names out there. Well, you mentioned um, you mentioned a name for for your presidential uh, option, but don't you have a name for who you think should be the next my uh, leader of the NDC in Parliament? Um, no, I, it would be very wrong for me to do that at the moment. Would it, it be it, you? It, 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 no, I am not a member of Parliament yet. Who, so who who do you who do you think? Which of the members of Parliament do you uh, think? There are a lot of people. There are a lot of people that have stayed in line that I think. Yeah, a lot of them. I mean, like like who? Of, because you, you have told the qualifications of Honorable Haruna Idrisu. Now, who else do you think is as qualified as him, has built the track record that you said, and can step into his shoes? Oh, there are a lot of them. But where I sit right now, it will, it will, it will look good if I start mentioning names. It, I'll be setting a very hard precedent, and then I may be making the job of, of, of the, the party very difficult, because once you put it out there and the grassroots start endorsing that some, mm. some of them say, oh, Mr. Tiviga has said this, but then you start creating confusion more into the party, which I don't want that to happen. What, what should the NDC do in order to solve these issues in a less public manner? The NDC will have to, the NDC as a party will have to immediately um, uh, uh, have an emergency meeting and that, just that's what, just that's what the, the, the uh, just as what the, a council of elders have done today. They have, you know, they went, and I believe the party hierarchy itself will also do, um, will also take certain drastic decisions in the interest of the party. So I think there's a system in place to to to, to straighten things out. It's not too late. Honorable oh, Tubiga, bef before you go, uh, we know that you're presently facing some disciplinary action from the party's uh, disciplinary committee. Have they reached out to you yet? since you received your dismissal letter? Um, I have not yet. I mean, they, usually they find time and then they write to you and invite you um, to come and create the disciplinary committee to defend yourself. And then when you, when you meet them and then you're able to, you know, it's like um, take it, you, to say the side of your story for them to see if there's a need for them to, to take a decision, you know, and any decision that they take, they take in the interest of the party. And, and that has not yet happened? It hasn't happened yet. Usually, they, they have a way of doing things. It hasn't happened yet. Is it? It's supposed to happen within six months. Yes, within six months. Yes. Right. Have you prepared your defence, or are you still standing by uh, all the utterances you made, which they they, they oh, found I, unsafe? I, I, I have always stood by. You know, a man has an integrity. I have criticised individually for not handling their offices very well, for not delivering their duties very well for not doing what they're supposed to do to protect the 6 million votes plus that our victory. And I stand by it today, I stand by it tomorrow. But if anybody is able to tell me, convince me that during my, uh, my constructive mm. criticism of their offices, that I might have caused the line to attack somebody personally besides their office and their job. Yes, of course, I, I, as, as a human, I, 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 I mean, it's nothing personal. I shouldn't be going personal. I should be attacking their office. I should, I should be criticizing their office, their, their actions, their, their way of work constructively, not their personal difference. And if I offended anybody personally, fine. Definitely I will, I will apologize to them. But mm. I stand by my criticism, uh, my criticism against the, the leadership of the party. And I stand by it. And like I told you, truthfulness doesn't get victory instantly. Truthfulness always gets a victory later on. And I believe that I'll be remembered you know, for, for taking the board decision that I think the party will sit up, things will no more be done with the same. And then they'll be coming on the ground to face us for votes. And then we'll ask them questions why they think we should change some of mm -hmm. them. And do and you think your reasons have so far been professional and not personal? No, not, not, none of my, 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 my criticism has been personal. None has been personal. Uh, and then, you know, I stand by everything that I said and like anything against the party itself as a party structure that I said that will against the party, that will bring the party's name into it, it should be no problem. But if the individuals did not do their work very well, 
I mean, their actions and inactions have caused us a defeat. And I think that, yes, and the party constitutions allow us to uh, demand for accountability and probity. Definitely for sure. Uh, I mean, I stand by everything. You know, but like I told you, um, um, to, to, to probity and accountability, that is, a, that is part of the, the party's uh, uh, motto. And then I don't, I don't regret, mm -hmm. I've never regret, I'll never regret asking for accountability and probity in the party or externally. Uh, Mr. Tubiga, one could say that these uh, grievances that have been so publicized could just be an agenda by a few people to get present leadership out and get their own people into the leadership positions. Uh, I don't think that there, there's any individual that can detect the matters of the 6 point something million voters out there. Mm -hmm. if you, have, you know, the fish rots from the head. So if we, are, we want to nip it in the butt at here so that it will send a signal that, look, we will no more be quiet, irrespective of your status, even our candidate, even if he, does, he or she does the wrong thing, we will come, we will come after them for, the, you know, for people to sit up. The party is bigger than anybody else. The party will make leaders and will continue to make leaders. Interesting. On, uh, Mr. Tubiga, what, what are your, your final comments? My final comment is the party is bigger than individual. And don't be afraid to speak up, stand up for the truth, be bold, and then call it pay the space, and let your integrity, maturity, principle, your conviction of standing up uh, for the truth uh, guide you in anything that you're doing on this end. Interesting. Now, let me quickly read uh, a response that has come in from uh, minority uh, NDC leader in parliament, Honorable Haruna Idrisu. Uh, now, he is stressing that he is fully in charge. Uh, he says he's the minority leader, and as of this morning, he has engaged with the party leadership and council of elders, uh, and he believes that he's looking forward to cooperation and collaboration, and let nobody exaggerate that uh, he has more than he has, which is known parametrically and numerically. The party, he says, uh, has discussed amongst itself the caucus and parliament to make a determination on the resignation of a uh, member of parliament of North Tongu, uh, Samo Okluje, to Ablaka. And uh, he says again, I don't forget I am in parliament in my own right as the elected member of parliament for Tamale South. Now, uh, we, we mentioned earlier that the main discussion today is the resignation of uh, lawmaker Samuel Okujeto Ablakwa, who has resigned from Parliament's Appointments Committee uh, with immediate effect. Uh, Mr. Mr. Tubiga, are you still on the line? Yes, I'm on the line. Okay. Now, uh, th this statement from, from Mr. Um, sorry, Honorable Haruna Idrisu, he also says, may I extend to you leadership of the House, the Committee of Selection, and the leadership of the, the NDC my sincere gratitude for the opportunity to serve as member of the 6th, 7th, and 8th parliaments of the Republic of Ghana. He says some supporters of the NDC, although they have expressed uh, their disappointments in recent issues, uh, he is still fully in charge. What do you think? Do you think Honorable Harun Idriso is fully in charge? Oh, it's a matter of time. Even if they are going to change, like our General Secretary um, spoke, that at a point in time, there will be new um, leadership. So at the moment, yes, he's still in charge you, until the new leadership is formed. How it's soon do you think the new leadership will be formed? Um, I think the general secretary and the leadership of the party will be able to give us, or the parliamentary caucus will be able to tell us that. So um, with this, I, look, that I don't think it should be, it should be long. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Stephen Atubiga. Stephen Atubiga uh, is a member of the... National Democratic Congress. He was also recently uh, suspended from the NDC. So he's presently not a, a member. He's a suspended member of the National Democratic Congress. He is strongly on the side of uh, disagreement against the present leadership of the National Democratic Congress, uh, minority leader in parliament, NDC leader in parliament, uh, also a member of parliament for Tamale South, Haruna Idrisu. Now, we know that a lot of supporters of the National Democratic Congress 
have expressed a lot of disappointment in the last month uh, against members on the appointments committee specifically for supporting the approval of some ministerial nominees. Uh, these ministerial nominees who are presently ministers include Mr. Honorable Ofori Atta, member of uh, Finance Minister, Hawa Kumsen, and Information Minister Kojo Opon Onkroma. Um, on Tuesday, we also know that Member of Parliament for Bogatanga Central, who is Honorable Isaac Adongo, had dis described the approval of uh, the Finance Minister as very, very disappointing to him and he broke ranks from the rest of the party's position. Uh, we also know member of uh, former Kumbungu member of parliament, Ras Mubarak, has stated that the decision uh, by Honorable Ablakwa to resign from the appointments committee is a key indication of a vote of no confidence in leadership of the party in parliament. Uh, he also said that there are quite a number of unhappy uh, minority MPs who are likely, likely to follow the decision. We also heard from uh, Stephen Atubiga, who says that he can uh, say on authority that there are at least two more members of parliament expected to resign from the appointments committee. That's NDC uh, members of parliament who he knows will resign in the next few days. He, he declined to mention their specific names. Uh, he also has interesting stance on, on the issues, and he believes that leadership should be overhauled. Uh, that is his position. He has not yet uh, been called back to the party. He has not yet been summoned by the disciplinary committee of the National Democratic Congress. Uh, we are following the situation as it is a developing story as to whether the National Democratic Congress will go ahead with uh, the possibility of changing leadership in parliament. Is that uh, a possibility? Will it materialize? And if it does, who will be uh, the next leaders of the NDC side of parliament? This is interesting uh, to look forward to. And we're following the story to a logical conclusion. My name is Nuang Falong, and you have been tuned in to Spotlight on MX24. We are grateful for your time on behalf of the entire production team. Thank you. Join us again same time tomorrow, 8.30 to 9.30 p.m. Good evening.